Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another segment of Expert Corner. Today, we have an amazing guest with us. We have Dr. Mark Belmonte joining us to talk about plant hormones and how they help crops. Dr. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you? Great. Thanks very much, Tracy. Doing great today on this super cold Winnipeg day. I know. Home stretch, home stretch. (laughs) (laughs) So we'll warm up the audience here with a great topic that we have, talking about plant hormones and how they help crops. I know you have a lot of good information for us. Before we dive in, do you want to talk about your role with Stoller Enterprises? Yeah, so I'm an independent university partner as well as collaborator And I've been working with Stoller and their team on a number of discovery as well as applied research projects for well over five years now. And and they range from everything from synthetic plant hormones to the way that nutrition impacts crop performance to better understanding how plant biostimulants, including biological inoculants, can be used to improve plant health. Okay, excellent. So... Why don't we dive right into the science behind plant hormones? What are they and why do they matter? You bet. And so what I like to do is I I like to show an infographic that I think really gets to the, uh, the meat and potatoes of the way that these plant hormones work. And so when we think about a a plant hormone, uh, a plant hormone for, for those of you who, who may not be that familiar with them is that, you know, just like humans have plant or have hormones, uh, plants also have hormones. And these hormones are tiny little molecules. They're tiny little molecules that are synthesized in very specific locations of the plant. And these tiny little molecules have a huge impact on the way that that plant is going to grow, the way that that plant is going to develop the way that that plant is going to be able to respond to different types of environmental stresses as well as different types of biological stresses. So they play a role in pretty much every single aspect of uh, of crop development as well as, as crop production. And if we take a look at this plant hormone cycle here, we can divide it very broadly into two different parts. One is during growth and vegetative development and the other one during flowering, reproduction, and maturation. So if we go from left to right, the first thing we're going to see is early germination as well as crop establishment. So early in the growing season, usually when those soils are, you know, a little bit more cold or definitely, you know, a little bit more wet, we want to be able to get that seed out of the ground as quickly as possible. So one of the ways that the seed is going to be able to do that is that it's going to activate what's called growth hormones. And these growth hormones includes cytokinin, auxin, and gibberellic acid. So all three of these plant hormones have to act together. Each one of these plant hormones has a distinct role within the plant. So for example, auxin is going to be responsible for initiating the cells. Cytokinin is going to be responsible for dividing the cells. And gibberellic acid is responsible for enlarging the cells. So you can imagine that the plant wants to be able to get that root in the ground. That root is going to be able to mine for water. It's going to be able to get all that nutrition into the developing seedling. And eventually during vegetative growth, those leaves are going to expand. They're going to be able to set a really beautiful canopy so that they can get as much sunlight as possible. Once they can maximize the canopy, get as much sunlight as possible, they're then going to transition. They're going to transition from vegetative growth through to flowering. And what's going to happen, as we can see in this infographic, is that the growth hormones, which were so active and present early in the crop life cycle, are going to start to turn off. So they're going to start to turn down and stress hormones are going to turn up. And even though they're called stress hormones, they have a really important role in the way that that crop is going to grow and develop. So a little bit of stress, just like we have a little bit of stress, you know, to be able to perform better, a little bit of stress is also really important for that crop to perform better so that it can set seed, it can develop really good high quality seed. And if we're talking about seed that's grown here in Western Canada, we get really good starch content in in our cereals, as well as really good oil content in our, in our oil seeds. Fantastic. That was a great explanation. Thank you. (laughs) 
<laughs> I love it. I could sit there for hours. Listening. <laughs> okay. So I'm curious, how long have scientists known about these? You know, this is a really cool question uh, because from a scientific perspective, we've been studying hormones for over a century and we can go all the way back to Charles Darwin, who, who made observations about how plants were starting to turn their heads as well as turn some of their plant bodies towards the sun to may be able to maximize that photosynthetic capacity. So even though we've known about plant hormones and even though we've been studying plant hormones for centuries, um, it's still relatively new um, when it comes to an additive that growers can use uh, for, for maximizing their, their yield potential. Okay, excellent. So I'm curious, what level of research goes into studying plant hormones and how they can work yeah. in plants? Yeah, right? so this is also a great question. There's a ton of research that that goes into this kind of stuff. And, and that's really important. That's really important from a, from a scientific perspective that we know exactly what these plant hormones do. We know exactly when they're turned on. We know exactly when they're going to be turned off. And we know exactly what they should be doing across every single stage of that crop life cycle. So from myself, for example, I've been studying plants and had a passion for, for plant biology for, for over 20 years. And, and my lab specifically has been interested in, in how plant hormones impact crop development for well over a decade. So we study everything from the way plant hormones impact the crop uh, to better understanding their, their precise mode of action in both space as well as time. Excellent. So, okay, let's dive a little deeper. Do you want to talk about your research efforts, both with the university and with Stoller? Yeah, you bet. So in collaboration uh, with Stoller, we're, we're broadly interested in, in making better crops. So this can be achieved through uh, a deeper knowledge of how plant hormones impact every single aspect of the plant from seed germination all the way through to plant establishment and eventually uh, plant maturation as well as seed filling. So we study the, the mode of action of plant hormones and, and plant biostimulant technologies, including synthetic hormones like auxins and cytokinins and, and gibberellic acids and understand the ratios between each one of those hormones and how the balance between these hormones plays such a critical role in, in plant performance and, and, maximizing, and maximizing yield potential. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we went over the hormones, the science, the research. Now let's take it right to the farmer. How can farmers and industry experts use synthetic hormone technology to improve their farm? Yeah, it's also a it's also a great question. And so even though plant hormones uh, are relatively new to, to the Canadian market, so they've been broadly used for the past decade, but certainly have been used uh, across the world for, for especially Europe and, and South America for, for over 30 years now, there's a number of different ways um, that growers are able to use plant hormone technology. Uh, first and foremost, they can be used as a seed treatment or a, a seed dressing. And our research has shown that if a grower wants to see uh, a really nice uh, return on their investment, they want to be able to really see a really nice visual of the seeds getting out of the ground faster, applying uh, plant hormones to those seeds is definitely going to be able to get those seeds a jump start. But we can also apply these hormones uh, with your herbicide or with your fungicide. So we can apply them as a spray, a foliar spray, and they're taken up quite easily by the plant. They're processed by the plant in order to activate those different components of cell growth. So cell initiation, cell division, as well as cell expansion. We can also apply the plant hormones in furrow, so we can apply them as a, a sideband, as a dressing. Uh, and also if you have a, an irrigated system, we see fantastic results when, when the hormones are applied in an irrigated system um, with, with a lot of moisture. Okay. Right on. I'll let you keep on going. Do you want to dive you, into, I know you have, I know you have a good chunk of information for us about yield benefits and the plant and all that good stuff. Do you want to roll right into that? 
Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we've we've got a lot of um, really great results, and and again, we we've been working with this type of technology with plant hormones for for so many years now, and and my team ha- has really seen a lot of benefits. So first and foremost, what is a grower looking for? They're looking for yield benefits. So how is a grower gonna be able to, to really benefit and maximize on, on that crop's yield potential? Well, first and foremost, we gotta be able to balance the hormones, right? So just like our bodies need to have balanced hormones, crops also need to have balanced hormones. And so if you wanna get the balanced hormone, you gotta make sure that the plants are not undergoing any type of stress. So if the plants are going some sort of stress, applying a plant hormone product or nutrition product can also help get that plant out of a stress in order to, again, accelerate growth and promote a uh, really strong structure within, within the plant. Um, like I mentioned, these hormone products are going to be able to reduce stress. And so we've done a lot of research um, where seeds have been put into cold soils, or perhaps the plant is experiencing uh some sort of heat stress or heat blast. So for example, in cold soils, if you apply growth hormones like oxen, cytokine, and gibberellic acid, that's going to get the seed out of the ground a lot faster. If the plant is undergoing, for example, heat blast, such as we see with, with canola all across Western Canada, what's going to happen during heat blast is that the cytokinin within the seed is going to go down. So we've done all of this research. We know what those levels of hormones are supposed to look like. And so we can then go ahead and rescue and supplement the the crop with, with more cytokinin. But we can also see a lot of architectural benefits. So again, not only can we get a benefit from the crop in terms of yield benefits, but architecture also plays a really important role in the in the success of that crop. So for example, we can build a stronger stem. So we can build stronger straw, especially within cereals. We can do that through applications of, of cytokinin because cytokinin helps to divide cells. When the cells are dividing, it's essentially like laying down bricks and mortar. So the more bricks and the more mortar you lay down, the thicker the stem, the stronger the stem, which means that that plant is not going to lodge as easily, you know, when a strong wind comes around. But we can also see better vines in tomatoes, for example, we're going to get shorter nodes. And when we get shorter nodes, we're going to get increased architecture. That plant is going to become a lot more stronger so that it can hold fruit. And when it can hold fruit, you're going to be able to, again, maximize that yield potential. Another great benefit when it comes to when it comes to crops, especially row crops, are potatoes. And one of the things that we want to do with potatoes is we want to be able to close up those rows as quickly as possible. That's of course a, a great way to manage weeds. And so one of the ways that we can do that again is just by accelerating that growth. We accelerate that growth through hormones like oxen, cytokine, and gibberellic acid, as well as balanced nutrition program. We're going to be able to to close up that row. Finally, we're going to get a lot of we're going to get a lot of quality in terms of uh, quality benefits. So, for example, if we're looking at grapes, uh, we're looking at sugar beets, you know, any sorts of fruits and vegetable, we're going to be able to push sugars um, into those fruits as well as those vegetables. So you get higher bricks, you get higher bricks, you get a higher quality plant. And, you know, we don't really think a lot about uh, tropical fruits and vegetables, but, you know, there's a lot of research that goes into to hormones with with uh, tropical fruits and vegetables and sizing pineapples as well as bananas. So again, just driving all of the sugars that the plant spent so much time building up within the leaves as well as the stems and getting those sugars down into into the fruits is is just another way to uh, improve the quality of, of the end product. Excellent. Dr. Mark, if you are not an instructor, teaching this stuff, I would highly recommend that you become one because yeah. you are great at explaining <laughs> it. Thank you. That was good. Thanks, A lot Stacey. of good information. Thank cool. You. Thank you. Okay. So let's shift gears a little bit. There's been a lot of talk about using seaweed as an agriculture additive. What's the difference between seaweed and synthetic hormone technology? Yeah, that's that- that's another great question because we're seeing a lot of new products that are coming onto uh, the markets here in North America. Uh, and, and first and foremost, what I got to say as a researcher, we have to be able to know exactly um, what's going on to the crop. And, and as a scientist, 
We like to work with numbers. We like to work with quantitative data. And, and while there certainly are some results um, that have showed benefit impacts of, of naturally uh, occurring seaweeds on, on crops, we don't know exactly you know, where those crops are or where those uh, products are coming from. So for example, where, where was that seaweed harvested? Under what types of conditions? We don't know exactly the proportion of the hormones that are found within the seaweed, even though we know seaweed as a progenitor of the land plant certainly do have um, hormones within them. We like to be able to know what that balance is. And again, that balance of plant hormones is just so critically important, right? For managing the overall quality as well as productivity of that crop. One of the other things that we also know with, with some of the synthetic hormones like auxin, cytokine, and gibberellic acid, those stolar products that we've been working with is that we know exactly what's in it. We know exactly what's in it. We know exactly what that hormone is going to do under what conditions. And so there's a lot of potential in terms of how we're going to be able to use synthetic hormone technology and from a scientist perspective, there's literally hundreds of thousands of peer-reviewed articles when it comes to hormones and how hormones are, are going to uh, affect the plant. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for touching on that. This has been wonderful. Uh, we covered a lot there. If you don't have anything else to add... I know, I know you pretty much covered everything. What I'm going to do is just do a call out to the audience and let you guys know that this is a three part segment. We're going to be talking about plant hormones, what they are this episode here. We're also going to be talking about plant hormones for crop stress and for solving niche crop problems. So a really great three part segment here. So make sure to tune in, catch all three parts of those, which will be linked in the show notes here. And if you guys want more information, you can visit Stoller's website. Again, that'll be linked in the show notes. You can go to YouTube and you can also give them a call at their 1-800 number. Dr. Mark, that was fantastic. It was a lot of fun hearing about it. I really enjoyed that. It took me back to my plant science days in agriculture, being an Aggie. So thank you so much. You bet. Thanks very much, Tracy. You're welcome. And you in the audience, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next segment. Bye-bye guys. Good. That's it. That was yes. good. You're great. Hey. I didn't, I didn't say that just to say that you, oh. you, you really explain stuff in a personable, easy manner oh, that makes it nice. easy to listen to. So Oh, geez. Thanks. Yeah. So if you're not a teacher, go start teaching. I, I am actually. But oh, yeah, oh, you so are. <laughs> okay. I'm like this guy. You, you, you just, you. I didn't want to like, I didn't want to say anything, but yeah, it's a, uh, I do. I, I don't like, I teach it, but I teach it a, a different kind of, a uh, different kind of way. So. Yeah. And that's why I didn't get into it too much. I just made that as a comment to be. It could go. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like we go, we go into really crazy detail with, with some of this stuff. And so like, I feel like this is just kind of skimming the surface of, of, of the technology and what it does. Well, and that's why I said that because, you know, I mean, you have your detailed oriented personalities, which yes. will, will, they'll get jiggy with it and go right to all the details. Right. <laughs> but a lot of people, if you go sell the sizzle and not the steak, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, this and then it's also great. like getting to know like what the audience you're talking to, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So like next week, I'm going to be talking with uh, Richardson. So I'm going out to Saskatoon and, and going to be talking with all their agronomists about similar type of stuff, but like in a little bit more detail because they need their credits and all that kind of stuff like that. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So it'll be, so I give like a half day kind of uh, workshop for, for their agronomists out in Saskatoon next week. Oh, good. Well, yeah. good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks. It was nice meeting you and thanks yeah, for you bet you too. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm sure our path will cross one day again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And good luck with calving season. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye. Okay, bye bye.